Welcome to Lake Forest, California and the incredible new waterproof Mariner quadcopter that you see in front of me. I've made several modifications to the Mariner and uh, I'd like to discuss them. Uh, the first of which is rather than using the plastic landing skids, I have a titanium rod that uh, I've embedded in a, uh, in a cork. Now we can use the same fittings that were down inside there. And that in turn goes into a, uh, a ball, uh, giving it a little bit more flotation, plus the fact that it keeps the quadcopter, uh, basically gives it higher ele elevation from the, from the ground. The uh, quadcopter then I put in a switch to control the battery. Now in this particular test, I've taken the battery from the inside, I've added a very, very flexible silicon cable to it because I don't want any drag, and I put the battery underneath. Now, one of the reasons why I put the battery underneath is previous tests showed incredible stability. Now let me flip the quadcopter over and show you how I've done that. This is a pretty much a standard mount for a, a camera, and notice the important thing is that in this ball, this swivels very, very easily. So if we were to mount a battery on the top of this, like this, the battery would essentially be free to rotate completely as the quadcopter itself does a roll or pitch axis. So we re re retain uh, our orientation to the center of gravity and the weight, but yet we don't have to overdrive the uh, the uh, motors, the servo motors. Now, there's a second thing that I can do as a test. I can actually lock this down. So in this case, I make it very rigid. Now putting the battery on, I have a rigid member here with the battery attached. And I think this isn't gonna work quite as well, but of course it's uh, part of the idea of testing and evaluation. You can see how far out the battery is mounted from the bottom of the quadcopter. It's approximately four inches. I can make the extension longer or shorter if I want. Notice also that it clears by about an inch from the landing skids in the bottom of the balls. So that means I can even go a larger battery pack, probably up to five or 8,000 milliamp hours in a 4S system if I want. So with these modifications, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the propellers that I have, which are basically a narrow blade rather than the factory wide blade, better lift propellers, but I don't have any more of those. And let's go out in the flying field and actually test the operation and stability with these modifications. Well, we're at the flying field and uh, we've got the battery set up on the bottom. The quadcopter is inverted. And in this case, first test, I'm gonna make it stiff. So the weight is uh, simply, simply affixed to the quadcopter and not on the gimbal arrangement. Now notice also I'm using an audible alarm for low battery alert. So when the battery cells get below 3.3 volts, there's a very, very loud warning as well as flashing red lights. I don't use the lights LED built into the quadcopter because uh, they're a little bit too hard to see. But anyway, you can see the balls, the orientation, red forward, green backward to parallel the LEDs and let's give it a test. I'm in the GPS mode. The battery is mounted on the bottom. You can see my landing arrangement, very stable. Unfortunately, with the head lever or gimbal battery, it went into oscillation. So I don't think that's a good idea. But anyway, we have to try. It just seems like the best in terms of stability. It's exactly like it is. Battery directly mounted to the bottom. This is a single battery inside or outside. 3,300 milliamp hours and no battery on the inside. It's got a low voltage alarm to it. And again, hands off control. It's the thing is, GPS position and altitude, absolutely perfect. What a great flyer. One of the things that you'll notice is just how visually easy it is to get orientation with the red and green balls. And I can rotate it very easily, elevate it, drop it down, but my orientation is very, very easy to maintain because of the coloration.
Well, in summary, not all new technology works perfectly. My little device then that permitted the gimbal battery, both fixed and with the screw moving in the open position, it allowed it to swing very easily, was pretty much a failure because it sent the craft into an oscillation mode. But of high success then was my little balls. You notice my titanium rod, uh, I have a grommet to supporting it and of course a small cork, a number zero cork that, that uh, will go into the bottom of the copter. The rod ex is extended down here because it hits the base of the screw then and uh, will not allow the bowl to collapse. So while well, that system worked out good, uh, we do have another way to uh, put that on and that is to use just two simple U-shaped titanium rods, or I guess it could be stainless or any other type of material that's durable. The quirks go on the end of this, and of course this gives a skid arrangement as shown in the previous pictures. So either way, balls on the end of a titanium or stainless steel rod with the quirks, or you can replace the balls with these long shafts, and of course the idea is now you can use a, uh, a, uh, a pool tube then that the kids used for flotation and uh, and simply mount it around the uh, the linear edge of the titanium rod. So from Lake Forest, California that completes our test on the Mariner.